Good morning. Well, I hope that uh, you're all getting excited about the Daniel plan. You do realize you're all doing the Daniel plan because I need it. <laughs> so you're my excuse for, uh, for being involved with it. Um, there's one thing about the Daniel plan, and particularly if you talk to people like Linda we've seen this morning and Claire, um, that know so much about the the food side of things it kind of really just gets you energetic it gets you motivated uh, it really is fantastic so i just encourage you to go over to the um to the stall afterwards and uh, just talk to uh to, to those that are there i can assure you you will you won't be able to leave without learning something um it really is fantastic um just like to say that it's fantastic this morning to have David and uh, Madeline with us. Um, they've pastored in this area for many, many years. I won't say how many years, because um, first of all, I don't know, um, but, uh, which is a minor reason, of course, but, uh, but th they were there and in um, uh, heading up the, uh, the denomination uh, in this area when, uh, when I first came. So. Uh, they've kind of certainly a lot longer than I've been and so they've been involved in ministry but um, uh, David is also uh, one of the chaplains at North Tees uh, Hospital so if ever you go there he's the guy you want to pray for you <laughs> okay um, I, all I can say is I would want him to be praying for me a great man of faith and uh, we just honor you being with us uh, this morning so thank you for that Tracy um, I don't know if Tracy's here or she's in Oh, she's online. Um, she's uh, learning to be a chaplain as well, and uh, so David has taken her under wing. He's the one that encouraged her and spurred her on, and uh, so she's really excited about that. So, um, so it's a big thank you, David. Even though you are an unseen generally as part of our church, um, you are your influence is, uh, is, has been powerful upon me personally, and uh, of course Tracy and many others. So thank you for being here this morning, we, we're really pleased with that. Well, <clears throat> last week we looked at what was God's uh, prescription for health, and we looked at some of the aspects for that, didn't we, last week? Um, but uh, one of the things that I'm aware of is that for all of us, we want to change. Um, it is something that's pretty universal, isn't it? We can look around us, um, just uh, anywhere we, we go, you find obviously the, the, the gyms have, uh, have people in because they're wanting to, to change. Uh, the self-help books that, you know, there's, there's a whole industry um, worth billions of pounds, um, that, uh, you know, even you know, in this country and in, around the world that are, uh, are trying to kind of um, tell us how to be healthy. And there's lots of positive things and uh, some of these help help self-help books are really, are really good. Um, they've got some good information. So like I said last week, my aim is not to give you some information that you don't already know with regard to diet and exercising and those kind of things. But we do want to kind of talk to you about some, some things that most people miss and particularly um, when these books look at, uh, look at your diet and look at uh, fitness, they miss out some very important aspects to being able to keep it over the long haul. For many of us, we can start something and we're good at starting something. I am anyway, I can start something and uh, with willpower can keep it going for a while. But after a while, it's amazing how quickly you can lose um, the motivation for it. And so uh, last week we talked about that and a little bit about the motivation that we should have uh, on that. Because we don't want to have changes that are superficial we want to have changes that will last um, and we want to do it for the right reasons uh, that we are uh, doing it now <clears throat> one of the classic texts in the word of god about change is uh, romans chapter 12 that's the sixth book in the new testament matthew mark luke john acts and then romans and chapter 12 and uh, we're just going to go through the first 12 verses uh, of Romans uh, 12 uh, because as I said last week and the week before uh, one of the things that we are wanting for you to be uh, our dream for for each of us is to be healthy wealthy 
godly and wise. And so our health is an important part of that. And so we're starting the year with that. We will look at the other aspects uh, throughout the year. And so it is important to realize that the way we are uh, in changing, any change that we need to want to bring, uh, whether that's spiritual change, physical change, mental change, emotional change, relational change, whatever it might be, there are some keys to having change and particularly lasting change. And so that's what I want us to talk about uh, today. So the first is, uh, is from this, uh, these 12 verses is that there is the first principle that we find and that is the principle of devotion, the principle of dedication. In other words, it's about committing our body to God. It's his, we talked about that last week, it belongs to him, he created it, he paid for it on the cross, uh, he owns it, we are just loaning it, it's not ours, we know one day uh, that we will get version two of this body and, uh, and so we're, obviously we're, we're looking forward to that as well. Um, but God expects us to look after what he has given us. There's a stewardship issue and the two things that run through scripture all the way through are salvation and stewardship, the importance of looking after what God has given us. And he has given us their bodies and if you're like me, so often we put so many toxins in. We don't think of it as a poison. We don't think of it as that. I just think it's something that would feed me, something that would... Um, you know, I'm hungry, I open the fridge, what's the first thing in there? I'm looking for something quick. Yes, so uh, one of the things I'm finding with the Daniel plan is it takes more time. So sometimes in a lot of things it's about being prepared and preparing yourself. And so this is the starting point uh, in this, uh, which I think is, is so important, is in verse 1. It says, therefore I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Now, why does God ask for our physical? Why does, why does Paul say here, you know, offer your body, the physical side of you? Because so often he didn't say offer your soul. He didn't say offer your spirit. He said offer your body as a living sacrifice. This is, this is important because uh, the physical is, is what we live in, and we can only be and do what's in the physical realm. And so we've got to understand that where our spirit is, our spirit is in our body, our soul is in our body. We're not, we're not, we know. And so often we think we can separate them, but actually often with change, the first thing we need to do with change is to change something physically, to change uh, our behavior, to change the way we are. And so our body affects our behavior, our body affects our moods, our body affects our motivation. Any teacher would tell you this, that if a pupil goes into class and he's, got, uh, he's, he's looking down, he's looking depressed, his shoulders are slouched or whatever, or he's looking grumpy, the teacher knows he's in for a hard time because he knows that the attitude of the person is reflected by their body language. And I've noticed that so many times. I remember, when, particularly for me, the first time when I came to Stockton and there were a number of people in the church and they looked depressed. And they were depressed. And they hung together. So depressed people met with depressed people and they all kind of gathered together and uh, probably enjoyed being depressed together. I don't know. But I want to say to you that your body affects your moods. And so, it, in so many ways, I mean, you might want to try this morning, you might want to try just sitting up, shoulders back, and just take a deep breath, <gasps> and then breathe out, big smile, and you'll find that you're a bit more alert, you'll find a little bit more with it. And that's, that's part of the thing. Now, for me, that's beneficial, because if you're more alert, you might listen to a little bit more of what I have to say, or for a little bit longer you might want to do that. But it is important to us to realize that, that our physiology affects our psychology. And, uh, and, and so often we think that we can just eat what we like or do what we like, treat our bodies how we like, and it not, not affect our moods, not affect uh, our focus, not affect our relationship with God. E everything does. And so it's amazing how we think to ourselves, okay, if somebody goes and has an affair, we think to ourselves, well, that's wrong. 
Yes, and we know God, God says that's wrong. But actually, when we eat junk, we don't think of it as being wrong, do we? We think to ourselves, okay, but we, we've got to change our thinking and realize that actually when we mistreat our body through the things that we eat, the things that we do, um, it is going to affect us in every other area of our life. So it is, it is, it is interesting. I think this, what's wonderful with verse 1 is it starts with the little word, therefore. And uh, 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 the fascinating thing with therefore is, is you've got to ask, what is it there for? <laughs> yeah. And if you read the previous 11 chapters of, uh, of, uh, of Romans, you find that Paul is going through so many things. He's going, well, did this, God did this, and God did that, and then he did that, and then God did that, and then he did that, and then God did that, and then God did that, and he did this, and he did that. And it's after all this of going over that he did this and he did that and, he, and it goes through the whole long list and then eventually says, therefore, in light of all this that I've been talking about for 11 chapters, I want you to know now, therefore, because of God's goodness, because of God's love, because of God's plan on your life, therefore, offer your body as a living sacrifice. Offer what you have to him. And so we've got to understand that as long as we live on this planet, Everything we do for God, we do in our body. And so our bodies are important. Now, the word offer, of course, is important. Now, because offer means it's voluntary. It's not compulsory. And so nobody can make you, um, you know, volunteer for something, can they? If it's voluntary, it's something that is of your choice, something that you, you want to do. So nobody can do that. That's why I wish I could make people offer themselves to God. I wish I could force people into the kingdom of God. I wish, you know, the, the, there's that whole thing, but I can't. It's got to be your choice and your choice alone to make the change. If you want to change, it has to be your choice. If you're changing because of a spouse, if you're changing because of somebody else, you're going to find it's going to be very difficult. And that's the problem so often when it uh, comes to marriage, isn't it? Yes? When, uh, when, uh, when the bride comes, uh, comes into, the, into, the, into the room and is going to get married, uh, she remembers three things. She remembers to walk up the aisle, and she remembers to stop at the altar, and then they sing her, and that's what she thinks is that I'll alter him. <laughs> ah, no, it's one of George's jokes, that one. But, um, <clears throat> but what I'm trying to say is you can't change your kids, you can't change your parents, you can't change nobody in your workplace, it doesn't matter how you, the only person you can change is yourself. And that's so often we concentrate on changing other people, but it doesn't work. We have got to learn to change and to make that decision for ourselves. The other thing he says is we've got to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. The thing with being a living sacrifice is too often is on Sunday morning we say, all to God I surrender, and then on Monday morning we've gone AWOL. On Monday morning we're off doing something else, and we've forgotten about the fact that we dedicated our lives to Jesus on Sunday. And so because we're a living one, we've got to realize that we've got to keep on dedicating our life to God. We've got to keep devoting ourselves to God. And sometimes... It might take 20 or 30 times in a day because it's a constant thing. Lord, I belong to you. Lord, help me with this. Lord, I belong to you in all the decisions that we're making. And some, you know, sometimes we think we've made a decision to follow Christ and that's it. But it isn't, is it? It's, it's, uh, it's again, to you know, maybe quote another one of George's, is that it's like the husband that said to his wife it's, uh, on the marriage day, he said, I love you. And if I ever change my mind, I'll let you know. And so, of course, he didn't say, well, we've got to keep telling God we love him because he's constantly telling us that he loves us. And so it's important that we do that. The, the thing is, is we have got to use our bodies and realize that they can be given to God as an act of worship. And, uh, and so there are a number of ways that we can um, do this. And the first thing is we can... Uh, cleanse our bodies. We can detox our bodies. 
uh, we can get rid of the rubbish that's in our bodies, yes? In other words, there may be some stuff that we need to stop putting in our body um, and start putting some good stuff in. And that's what the Daniel plan is about, is to stop the bad and put the good in, yes? And that could, that's not, okay, I'm talking about food, but that can be in the things that you watch, it can be the things that you listen to, it can be the, the people that you, so it can be all sorts of things that, uh, that we put, uh, we've got to take the old off. So if, for example, I wanted a new coat and I was to go down to Matalan and, uh, and I was to, to, to see a coat and I like that coat, what have I got to do? I've got to take the old coat off first before I can put the new on. And so we've got to take the old off before we put the new into our life. Amen? And so the 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 says this, Let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates the body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. What is the motivation? To be holy to God. That's why we do what we do. A lot of people have different motivations, don't they, for doing it. So perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. So let's ask ourselves, what common contaminates the body? It's the things that we put in our mouth, isn't it? What contaminates the soul and the spirit is the things we watch, the things that we listen to. So we've got to be aware that we can uh, put poisons into our life on a daily basis that, are, that we then wonder why we think wrong why we act wrong, why we feel in a bad mood is because of the things that we've done. The second thing we can do is by caring for our body. When we care for our body, that's an act of stewardship, just looking after it. Ephesians 5 and verse 29 says this, no one hates his own body but lovingly cares for it just as Christ cares for his body, which is the church, the family of God. So God wants us to look after our bodies just as Christ loves the church as he looks after the church. So how, how do you look after your body? Well, if you want to know, go over to the Daniel stall afterwards and talk to them and they will tell you about that. That's what it's about, so that we can get our bodies uh, into shape, amen? With exercise, dieting, washing, and all those kind of things. Maybe some of you need to have a wash. I'm not looking at anybody particularly. But if you want to know, come and see me afterwards. <laughs> Thirdly, by controlling our body. That is an act of worship. Just by controlling the things we put in our body, controlling the things that we do is so important. Now, in of themselves, they are not an act of worship. You can do the diet, you can do the exercise, you can control your body, you can care for your body, you can cleanse the body. But if it, the motive matters. So in other words, a lot of people go to the gym, a lot of people are doing some great diet plans, they're doing all these things, but they're doing it because of their self-image. They're doing it because of what it will make them look like or what they'll feel like. They're doing it for themselves or they might be doing it for a partner or somebody else. But all I'm saying is it's the motivation. Why are we going to do the Daniel plan? Because we want to honor God, because we love God, because we're devoted to God, because we have committed our life to God. He is the motivation behind why we're going to do what we do. That is so important for us. It is not automatic. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 4 says, Each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable. In other words, we've got to learn to control our body. Don't let it control me. And it's amazing how many times people say, but I couldn't help it. You can help it. Yeah, it's, I remember listen, um, reading uh, some books uh, by a psychologist. He was in Manchester. Um, I'm trying to think of his name. But uh, he, was, um, he, he dealt with a lot of people that were, you know, that were in prisons and things. And, uh, and he used to talk to them and they'd say to, he'd say to them, why did you do what you do? You know, why did you steal this? Or why did you get the, that lead off the roof? Why did you do that? He says, he says uh, you know, how did you get into drugs? How did you get into this? And that, often they would just say, I fell into it. I fell into it. You don't fall into anything. They were going with the same people, and we'll talk about that in a bit. It, the, who you associate is important. But it was, it was their decision. 
Nobody, you know, they didn't, you don't fall into that, do you? But maybe just through carelessness and not, not looking. I read a statistic to say that 75% of all healthcare is due to the things that we're not cleansing, controlling, and caring for our bodies. Amazing, isn't it? So change starts with the body. No matter what kind of change, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, relational, social, because it requires energy. You've got to have energy to change. Too often we're too tired to change. So we go home and we lay on the couch and we're just, uh, you know, eating crisps or cakes or whatever. And we're just, we're just not, we're not exercising, we're not moving. We're just, and, and what that does, that just makes you even more tired. That makes you even less motivated and more lethargic. Yes? And so when you get home, I like this bit, when you get home, you lay down and turn on Dancing with the Stars instead of Dancing under the Stars. Did you get that? Yeah. We would dance under the stars more if we lo watched less television and, uh, and ate some positive things. Uh, the second principle, which we find in verse 2, is the principle of concentration about focusing our mind, about where we focus our mind. It says this, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Now, in other words, the pattern of this world is the way the world thinks, the thinking of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, whatever gets your attention gets you, doesn't it? You know, so if you're, you know, as you say, it caught my attention. She caught my attention, Yes? So when I first met Kath, she caught my attention. So whatever catches your attention catches you. It, it take, you, you go wherever you're, you're thinking about. So in other words, there are some things that we need to stop thinking about and some things that, and, and, and start thinking about other things. So in other words, think about it. What do you need to stop thinking about and what do you need to start thinking about? This is so important, yes? So stop focusing on the bad, start focusing on the good. Stop focusing on your plan and start focusing on God's plan. Stop focusing on what everybody else wants and start focusing on what God wants. Stop focusing on the negative and start focusing on the positive. You're going to get transformed, you're going to get renewed in your mind and in your heart when you stop conforming to the pattern of this world. What does it mean to conform? It means to copy. And we all learn through copying. We grow up through copying things, don't we? Everything that you do so often, most of the things that we do, we, we've learned through copying. We've copied people. We do that as children, don't we? We copy that. And so that shapes our life. And so in your life, there are people that you're copying. Now, obviously, you copy somebody so much till eventually it becomes a habit. It's a habitual. And then, of course, it becomes yours, doesn't it, then? And then people can copy you. And so it's Im important to realize that. People don't go out and just start smoking because they think, oh, I think I'd like to go smoking. What happens is they're in with people. They're in an atmosphere uh, with people smoking, and they f feel the pressure to smoke and think, oh, I'll try that and give it a go. And so they can get, they copy what others are doing around them. And so um, it, it's important to realize there are some things that you and I are doing and we've done for a long time that needs to change. And God wants us to change. He wants us to, uh, to change from copying others or cap copying the bad and start to copy the good. Yes? And so it's important that we don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Yes? So growing up, for example, we have uh, models for conflict resolution for many of us that weren't very helpful. For, for many of us, we had models for anger management growing up that weren't, weren't good models for us. We had models for eating, models for how we speak to people, models for procrastinating. A lot of different patterns and things that we do and we've learned, we've learned because of the way we've grown up, or the, our peers, the people around us that have, uh, that have affected us. And so the second law of change from God's word is that we, to change our life, we need to change our models. We've got to change who our models are and make it a, a difference. We've got to get a new picture, get a new view, see things differently from a different uh, vantage point. So we need mentors, we need models, we need partners, 
and we need friends. And I've spoke about that in the past. Um, <clears throat> so we, but we need to choose the people that we're modeling our life after very carefully. The Bible says bad company corrupts good morals, good character. Your character will, will go swerve to rot if you're spending too much time with the wrong people. Yes? Now, for all of us, we have to spend time with people that maybe are of, of, of bad character. But if they are influencing you, then it's going to affect you. Yes? So the aim is for you to be a model for them, not the other way around. Jesus, who of course is the only perfect model, said for 20 times, he said, follow me. Jesus kept saying, follow me. Now, Paul said six times, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. So in other words, Paul's, Paul is saying the same. It's Christ that we're following. And if you need to have a physical example, watch my life because I'm following him. And that, I think, is a good question for us is to think, can people look at you and say, I'm going to model my life after you because I can see that you're modeling your life after Christ is so important for us. Amen? So let's not be conformed. Let's be transformed. And that's what the, the, the Greek word metamorphosis uh, is what we, we, we think of when we think of a, a caterpillar um, becoming a butterfly. Yes, that is, that is a transformation, okay? A, a butterfly is not just another version of a caterpillar. It is completely different. They are two different animals. They have gone from the old to the new. It's completely different. And I want to say to you that when you give your life to Jesus, when you get into, into God, when you get into his word, when you uh, bring some of the things that we're talking about to change, I want to say to you, it will be a transformation. And I want to say to you, there's only God can give you new life. You see, I could turn over a new leaf, and it's easy to turn over a new leaf, but I cannot get a brand new life. I can only have a brand new life when God gives me a brand new life. And so my prayer to you, uh, prayer is, and my uh, 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 urging to you is, give your life to Jesus because he is in the business of transforming lives. He does it day in, does it day out. He loves to transform our lives. We have got to get renewed and get transformed by putting off the old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires, those impulses, com compulsions that pull us in the wrong direction and be made new in our mind, new attitude in our mind. Uh, I heard this phrase saying, uh, attitudes are like nappies. You've got to keep changing them regularly or they'll start to stink. <laughs> so it's important of what we're putting off and what we're putting on. We've got to think about that. What are you putting on? What are you putting off? That's what the Daniel plan's about. Putting new things on, but you've got to stop doing some of the bad stuff, yes? And so it's important for that. The third principle is the principle of evaluation. We must humbly assess our current state, our current situation, yes? In other words, if I wanted to come to your house for lunch and... Um, and I phoned you up and said, how do I get to your house? You would ask me, where are you? You see, you, you can't direct me to your house unless you know where I am. Unless, unless I say, well, okay, I'm coming. Because even if you come in, like we say, the Destiny Church, but where is Destiny Church? How do I get there? Well, I've got to ask, are you coming from the north? Are you coming from the south? Are you coming from the east? Are you coming from the west? Where, which way are you coming at? Because that will determine the road you're going to be on. It's going to determine. There's no point some, somebody coming and saying, well, what you do is um, you turn left at the end of the road, then you turn right, because their road is going to be completely different to your road, so you've got to, 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 to know that. So in other words, you need to know where you are in your life. So the principle of change here we're talking about is you've got to know where you are. Know where you are physically, know the numbers, you know, get your BMI, know what some of the stuff is. Uh, where are you spiritually? Where are you mentally? Where are you emotionally? Where are you in your relationships? Some of these things... Get the facts. Facts are your friends. And, uh, and, and just get to know them. Yes, it is so important to do that. But I want to say to you, the key is humility. 
Because so often we try to hide the fact that we have problems or that we haven't got it all together. Yes? Um, it's amazing how many times you talk to people and they try to give you the impression that they've got it all together. But I want to tell you, none of us have got it all together. I haven't got it all together. You haven't got it all together. Nobody. Because we're living in a broken world. We are sinners. We are broken people. We are faulty. Uh, you know, everything about us. And so we're constantly needing God to keep us and redirecting us like a plumb line. The Word of God just helps us. This is where you should be. This is what you should be thinking. This is what God says over your life. And so it's important that we do that. But, you know, man of people who say, I don't have any problems. How's, how's things with your finances? You know, oh, things are great, but they're in debt. How's things with your health? Oh, great, but they're cutting themselves. How, how are things with it? And do you know what I'm trying to say? So there's so much uh, hurt and, and things, but we hide behind a mask. <laughs> yeah, emotionally in so many different ways. And thankfully, today is going to be the last day for wearing a mask. I understand Thursday's the day of freedom again, yes? Uh, <clears throat> but um, uh, mind you, I, I think the, the cause for wearing masks from what I was uh, listening to some of the radio was saying that it's actually very feeble uh, as an excuse. They said that actually it has about a 10% chance of stopping coronavirus, so there you go. Um, but uh, obviously, if, when, when the government asks you to do something, it's, it's good to, to do it if, if they're not asking you to do something that's unscriptural. But if they ask you to do something that's not scriptural, then you've got to still go ahead, haven't you? Amen. That's a side issue. No extra money for that. So honesty is the best policy, yes? You have to admit you've got a problem. Admit you've got a problem in your finances. Admit you've got a problem in your health. Admit you've got a problem in your relationship. Whatever the area is, admit you've got a problem because until you admit it, you're never going to be able to do anything about it. You're never going to be able to change it because it, it, it is so important that we do that. So we've got to be uh, humble and, uh, and take it from there. So let's not pretend something is a problem. And maybe that's a question I need to ask you today or maybe ask in your small group. What in your life are you pretending is not a problem? What in your life are you pretending is not a problem? And I believe that's so important uh, for us to, to do that. But we're going to need, when we evaluate us, it, it, it says to us there, it says in that verse, do not think of yourself more highly. Evaluate your life with sober judgment, you know, there's been honest, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. How much faith have you got? Because you see, you can grow your faith. You can develop your faith. How, how much faith have you got? So if you don't know how much faith you've got, how are you going to develop it? So it's important for you to do that. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. It doesn't say, oh, it's, it's difficult. It doesn't say, you know, it, it's going to be tough for you. It says it's impossible. So we've got to grow in our faith. We've got to believe that we can change. We believe that we can do better. And so you might be asking, how can you grow your faith? Well, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Get into the word of God. He, listen to what God is saying. I want to say to you, it's transformative by having the word of God. I'm amazed at how many people, they, they, they stop coming to church, they stop being in the connect group, they stop doing this, whatever things that are good for them. And then when you find out they've actually stopped some of the basics, they're not spending time with God, they're not having a personal relationship, they're not praying, they're not, you know what I'm trying to say? So once you do that, well then the other thing's going to naturally cut off. But spending time in your connect group with people, that's going to build your faith. Being with others that, are, that, are, that, are, that have got faith and, uh, and spending time with them and they're going to share the word of God uh, over your life and you're going to be able to share the word of God over their life. It's always reciprocal. We want, we want it that we build one another up. It's so important for us. Amen? And so if you've got limited faith, you're going to have a limited future. But if you've got unlimited faith, guess what you're going to have? An unlimited future. It is dependent on our faith. And I say that to myself as I do to you. The third law of change is obviously is that you need the word of God in your life and that you can only manage what you measure. If you don't measure it, you're not going to be able to do anything. So get, get the, the figures, yes? 
uh, for what you want to do. Fourthly, the principle of cooperation. I must get in a group for support. Now, I know I harp on about this a lot, but it is so crucial, it's so, it's so essential. You know, people say, oh, I need a break from connect group. I need a break from small. That's like saying I need a break from God. That's like saying I need, a, I need a break from life. No, break whatever else is taking you away from your connect group. Change whatever it is. Change connect group if need be. Start another connect group. Do whatever is necessary. But you need to be in a, in a group where you're having support where you're going to be with others. You don't have to be a lot of people, and you don't want too many people, but you do want other people in your life that are speaking into your life, that are encouraging you and trying to, uh, trying to do that. We need that. The Bible is full of talking about our need for one another and the importance of it. In fact, in the New Testament, there are over 58 times that it says to us about us needing each other, you know, and, and I think that was important. The one another's, we, uh, the, we love one another, bear with one another, care for one another, honor one another, pray for one another, greet one another, share with one another. In other words, we're not meant to go through life on our own. Yes, and I don't mean about being married, yes. That's not the issue. You can be married and not get it together, yes. Um, I, I'm talking about being in a spiritual community with people who are on the same, same length. And that's the great thing with Daniel Plan. It's built on faith. The motivation for doing it is because we want to be with God. It's got a group focus. None of the others have a sense of friendship. They just, you just go and then you, they, they want you to ch ch change your diet. They might give you a little bit of teaching. But I want to say to you, this is so di um, dimensionally uh, more helpful um, and, and uh, different to anything else out there because it has the, the faith aspect, it has the focus aspect, it has the friendship aspect to it as well as the fitness and the food. Amen? And so being in a small group is important. And I keep saying this, and I'll say it till the day I die, is, is if you're not in a small group, you're not really part of the church. Because that's where we connect. That's where we communicate. That's where we, we can love one another. That's where, where, where the spiritual life goes on. You can come here and you can listen to me, but there's, who is challenging you to change? Who is speaking into your life? Where's the connection? Who are you going for a prayer walk with? Who's, who's kind of, if, if, there's, if there's a need, how are you able to know the person's need in front of you or behind you? You don't know it. You can never know it. You might be able to have a little conversation, but it happens in small group. We, we know each other there, and we get to know, and so it's important for that. So the law of change that we're talking about there is that change requires community. Yes, it's never on our own. The fifth principle, how am I doing for time? Keep going. <laughs> the, the, the fifth principle is a principle of affirmation. In other words, we need to fill our life with love. And uh, love can change the world. It can change the unchangeable. Love invigorates, love revitalizes, love renews and love refreshes. Why? Because God is love. Yes, love heals, love uplifts, love strengthens, love energizes us. Song of Solomon, he writes there, he says, love is stronger than death. Love is stronger than anything. It's, it's, it's stronger than divorce. It's stronger than debt. It's stronger than discouragement. It's stronger than depression. It's stronger than disease. It's stronger than doubt. We need to fill our life with love. And, uh, and verse 9 says there, don't just pretend you love others, really love them. Hate what is evil, stand on the side of the good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. That's what we do in our small groups. Somebody has a little win, they just get a little bit out of debt. We celebrate. If somebody's got something that they've done, they've got a job, we celebrate. They've changed the job, we celebrate. Whatever it might be. Maybe I've lost two pounds this week. We celebrate. We celebrate the wins in people's lives. And so we've got to do that. I want to say to you, one of the keys to helping yourself is to help others. That, that's what you do. When you love other people, they will love you. And so it's important, isn't it, that we do that. In other words, 
if you want, to, you want help to, to meet your goals and you want God to help you meet your goals, you really need to be helping other people with their goals because it's reciprocal. It works that way. You see, God will bless you as you bless others. When you're trying to work on what's, what's just good for yourself, you miss God's blessing. Job, we read in the, the book of Job about Job, and of course he loses health, everything. He loses his health, he loses his wealth, he loses his family, he loses so much, much things. And, uh, but yet, when does he get healed? He gets it all back. In fact, God gives him a double blessing um, at the end of his, uh, um, after all things have, uh, have finished. And, uh, and he doesn't do it when Job prays for himself. It's when Job prays for his friends. It says there in Job 42 verse 10, it says, After Job prayed for his friends, the Lord gave him success again, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as before. In other words, when you're others-focused, when you are love-focused, because you're trying to show the love of God, it will bring change in your life. Sixthly, the principle of motivation you must nurture your enthusiasm. If you're going to have change over the long haul, you need to be enthusiastic about that. Amen? You've got to do that. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said this, nothing great is ever accomplished without enthusiasm. I've found that to be true in my life. If I'm not enthusiastic about it, no change happens. If I say, oh, well, I think I might go to the gym, Guess what? I'm never going to go to the gym. If I say to myself, oh, well, I think I might stop eating chocolate, what am I going to do? I'm going to keep eating chocolate because there's no enthusiasm. There's no passion there, is there? It's got to be heartfelt. It's not kind of, I, 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 I want to kind of get out of debt. Uh, do you know what I'm trying to say? It's got to be, I'm going to get out of debt and there's a the whole passion aspect to it. But I know... We, get, we start things, we get distracted by other things, we lose passion, we lose focus, we lose enthusiasm for those kind of things. So how can you stay enthusiastic day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out? How can you stay enthusiastic? Well, I want to tell you, it's because of the word enthusiasm comes from the Greek meaning entheos. En means in, and theos means God, which is where we get theology from, the study of God. Yes, so Theodore means lover of God. Dorothy means lover of God. Yes, so we get into God, you get into God, you get into prayer, you get into his word, you get into, into community of people of faith, get people around you that love God, get in God, and today I want to say to you, it will transform your life because you will be able to stay the course when everybody else might not be able to stay the course because you will have an inner motivation that comes from God in you. That's what you and I need. We need God in us. We need his power. We can't do it in our own power. Willpower lasts for only so long. And some people have got a lot of willpower. Um, but, but I want to say to you, it's more than willpower. Willpower will never change you. It might, it might give you a new start, but it'll never give you a new life. And so God in you will transform you. It will change you from being a caterpillar to being a butterfly spiritually. It will change you in your finances. It will change you uh, because you'll have the energy, enthusiasm that comes from God. God wants to dwell within us. He wants to be a part of our life and he can change everything about us if only we will let him. Amen.